Mayor Arctis was right. Things are changing rapidly, which is a very good sign, if rough going. Yes, there are still skirmishes, but those are dying down as people begin to realize that if they can accept other species, they can accept hybrids as well. One of the biggest proponents of acceptance are the churches, which have been preaching species tolerance for centuries. Still, there was a long way to go. Legal battles were there trying to get interspecies marriage legalized in some states which still had old laws on the books. But the tide was definitely changing. And for some reason, I'm being put up as the figurehead of the movement. Oh, if they only knew how reluctant I still am to take the spotlight in anything. Besides, it was Dr. Maxwell who made the real breakthrough, not me. Nonetheless, I was getting invitations to attend different meetings, both for color bears and for hybrids. One such meeting was being held in Louisville where Corona was born. They wanted me there primarily for that reason and asked me to bring Corona and Perseus. I had to turn them down since it was a school day. I accepted the invitation for myself, however. This wasn't a huge meeting, maybe 200 or so in attendance. It seemed that the primary purpose of the meeting was to address the problem of hybrid youth forming gangs. It seemed that as they emerged from the shadows, they felt a need to defend themselves from other gangs. This needed to be nipped in the bud, obviously. Okay, can we settle down so we can start this meeting? Thank you, and welcome to this convocation of the Tri-State Hybrid Association. To start us off, I'd like the Reverend Rudy Palmer from the Sojourner Church of Christ here in Louisville to offer the invocation. A mountain lion rose from the dais and took a spot by the lectern. He looked out on the crowd and eventually his eyes met mine and he froze. I also felt something. What was it? The moment passed and he bowed his head. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity you've given us to rescue our youth, to change them and mold them like a pot of mold clay into the kinds of adults this world so desperately needs, into the kind of parents and leaders that you so desperately need. We beseech your help in our efforts and pray that you give us the wisdom and courage we need so we can succeed and turn in the hearts and minds of our youth toward the peace that only you can provide. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I raised my head and saw him again looking at me. He then turned and went back to his seat. Thank you, Reverend. Before we invite up our first speaker, I want to acknowledge two people. First, the mayor of Louisville to my right, who has pledged his full support for this meeting and will be taking away the points raised back to City Hall. Second, I want to acknowledge a special guest here, Dr. Stargazer Borealis, professor of physics and astronomy at Marshall University and former vocalist for the Beach Bears. Could you stand up and be recognized? As I stood, I heard the sound of someone slapping a table. I looked in the direction of the sound, and it was the Reverend. He was staring right at me with tears in his eyes. Dr. Borealis was the first to donate his DNA to the research being done into hybrid formation. His daughter, who is a hybrid, was born in this very city seven years ago. I acknowledged the applause and sat down. The Reverend was still looking at me, and the longer I looked back, the more familiar he became. But I could not, for the life of me, remember where I had seen him before. As our first speaker, it is my pleasure to introduce Madeline Hensley, the director of the juvenile detention facility here in Louisville. She deals directly with our troubled youth and will update us on the work they are doing. Miss Hensley.
Thank you. First of all, I need to acknowledge the help of Reverend Palmer. He came to us from a troubled past and had first-hand knowledge of the type of thinking that draws our youths into gangs. I could not ask for a more dedicated and loving assistant. His efforts have changed the lives of many of these troubled youths. I will give you just a few examples. She then recounted the cases of several who had emerged from the detention center. All had been touched by the efforts of the reverend. Something in my mind just itched that I should know this lion, but nothing I thought of clicked. Miss Hensley's talk lasted about 20 minutes. The meeting was then paused so people could discuss what was said. The Reverend immediately left the dais and made a beeline for me. What had I done? He opened his arms wide to embrace me, which seemed natural for a Reverend to do, so I hugged him in return. It's you. It really is you. My inspiration, my savior. Whoa, whoa, your savior? Why do you say that? Oh, forgive me, doctor. Uh, let me back up a bit. Seven years ago, a very angry and very ignorant mountain lion tried to kill you. That was me. My mind snapped back to that day. So long, mongrelizer. <gasps> And later, at the police station... Fight fire with fire, man! You shut your mouth! Yes, it was him. But what a miraculous change! Even I had not hoped for this. All because I told him... Look deep in your heart and ask yourself if murder is the proper response to someone you think is a mongrelizer. So... You listened to what I had to say at the station. Oh, much more than just listen to you. That moment changed my life. You were right. We joined that ride because we wanted to hurt people. I truly had become the very person I resented. Someone who would take the life of another without a second thought. And my anger and my twisted sense of justice convinced me that I was in the right. But, but when your voice came on that PA, I was expecting you to throw the book at me. That's not what I heard. I heard kindness compassion. I heard a genuine concern for me. I-, I couldn't see through that glass, but it felt like you were looking right at me when you said that. We were about to be released on bail, but but I knew I couldn't live with my guilt, so I confessed. I needed to clear my conscience and make up for everything I did. No sooner was our trial over and I was in prison that I asked to see the chaplain. He, he helped me get my soul right with God and eventually recommended me to the seminary. I feel extremely blessed that the seminary took me. I mean, despite my lack of education and my incarceration, I guess the chaplain must have seen the same things in me that you did. But even after all these years, there's still one thing I have to know. Did you honestly not recognize me in that lineup? Or did you know and just decide not to press murder charges? I recognized you immediately. But I knew that extra punishment was not what you needed. You needed a change of heart. And that's what I tried to provide. I apparently succeeded. Then you really do forgive me for that day? Of course. I was alive. That was the most important thing. And from what I've heard so far, you've been a lifesaver to many other youths. I'd say you have atoned for everything several times over. Oh, thank you. Just hearing you say that has lifted a huge burden off my spirit. I only wish that someday I can have a heart as big as yours. People keep telling me that. Your heart is just as big as mine. You keep exercising it, keep counseling these youths, and you'll see it yourself if you haven't already. But your savior? No. Your savior is Christ. You know that. His grace and forgiveness is allowing you to become the person God created you to be, just as it has for me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was
was lost, but now I'm found. Twas blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing His promise good to me His word my hope secures He will my shield and portion be As long as life endures my chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing. Our chains are gone, we've been set free, our God, our Savior, has ransomed we, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The stars forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever He'll be forever mine. Lord, you are forever mine. I'll never forget you, Dr. Borealis. You're a real-life miracle worker. We can all be miracle workers.